Hi, I'm Cody, here with Red, and this week's edition of Ajax Tech Tip Videos, we're going to be talking about your engine cooling system. Or your anti-freezing system, depending on how you look at it. Whenever your engine's not running, it's an anti-freezing system. One of the points that I want to make is that a lot of people in, in racing situations, there's certain racing uh, sanctioning bodies that don't allow you to use any glycol-based coolant and therefore your system, when your bike's stored over the winter, if you don't think about it, it's gonna freeze and it's gonna cause damage with things. So it can cause the radiator to expand and crack. It can cause uh, an impeller to be in water that gets frozen and then you go out to start it periodically and then you start it with, a water, with an impeller that's sitting in ice, you can break the impeller, you can twist it off, you can cause engine damage. And you need to remember if you've done this, make sure that you go back in you know for your winter storage and put some anti-freezing agent in your cooling system to ensure that during the winter you don't have an issue that's going to cause you problems later down the road depending on the type of bike you have you may have a reclaimer on your cooling system or an expansion tank uh, you may have a fan you may not uh, it's important to know that if you have these that those also get drained whenever you're flushing your coolant or changing your coolant out with going with a different type of coolant whether it's an ethylene glycol, or if it's a propylene glycol, or if it's a water with water wetter. Water with water wetter has no glycol in it, and that is required by some race, racing sanctioning bodies. Now, if you actually race with your bike and you have something in your cooling system that doesn't have any glycol in it and no freeze protection, it's important to remember over the winter, especially if you're somewhere where freezing is prone to happen, to put something in there just for the storage period that is going to prevent the freezing that way you don't have costly engine damage or have to replace parts due to freezing and expansion of the water. Uh, some people don't realize that on uh, off-road motorcycles that do not have an expansion tank, the area above the cooling fins and below the filler neck is actually your expansion area. So if you fill it all the way to the bottom of that, you may not actually be overheating, but you're going to lose coolant as soon as it, it builds enough heat to open that pressure cap. Most manufacturers recommend you change out your engine coolant from every two years to sometimes five, uh, just because over time it gains acidity. Um, or if you're planning on changing it, just to change different types. It's important that you do not mix uh, ethylene or propylene. Um, so you're gonna wanna flush that out with distilled water. Uh, first thing we need to do is locate our coolant drain, which is gonna be right here on this particular unit. Whenever you remove the coolant drain screw, you don't have to worry about a whole lot coming out because the cap, as long as it's still on, it's creating a vacuum. So a little will come out. If it starts to come rushing out, then uh, you probably have a leak in your cooling system. And then grab our little hose here. I just have a fitting here with a hole straight through it. That's just to direct the flow of our coolant so it doesn't get on the ground. And release the pressure cap and let the coolant flow. It's always a good idea to observe state and local laws whenever you're disposing of your coolant. You should have a coolant disposal center at your local automotive parts store. But you never want to just dump it down your drain. Now, since we are doing the cooling system, I'm going to go over to the other side of the motorcycle and actually remove the reservoir bottle so that I can dump the coolant out of it as well. Okay, now we're pretty much drained. Uh, I'm going to leave this hose on here so that we can do a flush. I want to make sure that you Get any residual out of there or as much as you can, just to help the purity of the new coolant that you're adding to the system. I'm gonna use distilled water just for any of the remnants of the water that's still in there after the flush that has to mix with the coolant. You don't wanna use tap water because the minerals in the tap water will actually reduce the boiling point and it'll make for buildup in your cooling system. And the rate I'm filling will actually exceed the rate that it's draining so it'll catch up to itself. And while that's draining out, I just want to make a point that you can get a coolant that's already pre-mixed whenever you purchase it, or you can get a coolant that's not pre-mixed when you purchase it. It's important to know which you have. If your coolant is not pre-mixed, follow the manufacturer's recommendations of the coolant. And most cases it's 50-50 with, with distilled water. Make sure that you do use distilled water. Again, because tap water will leave deposits, there's still minerals and things in there that you don't need in your cooling system. 
Now we have everything flushed out really good with our cooling system. We're drained out. We're going to remove our draining apparatus, reinstall our drain bolt, and refill our cooling system. Refilling this one with an ethylene glycol premixed. This is Motorex's three year coolant. Whenever you fill your cooling system, especially on a larger engine, because everything's not perfectly level and your fill cap is not always at the absolute top of your cooling system, there's a possibility for air bubbles to be trapped. So you always want to start your motorcycle and make sure that you cycle the cooling system so it can fully circulate and get any of that unwanted air out of the system. Okay, now that our fans have come on, we can go ahead and shut it off. We want the motorcycle to completely cool down before we open the cap to add the remaining amount of coolant it's going to need for the system. You never want to open the cap hot. After we top that off, we'll be done. Anytime you use still water, make sure you don't move it because otherwise then it's not still. It's de-stilled. Huh, <laughs> these still. These, these still these water. These still water. These still water. Here, these still water is water.